people over our politics um, and, and seeing the humanity in one another. Um, so we're so grateful that you all have been here, be, are here tonight um, committing to this idea as well, um, learning how we can speak to people unlike ourselves um, and all be better for it. It's incredible timing to be on a campus having a dialogue about smoothing out the edges of contentious political debate just 19 days before what is probably the most contentious election of all of our lifetimes. And yet, how perfect it is to set conditions that will prepare us for the hard work ahead after the votes are counted. Because no matter who wins on November 5th, we will remain a deeply divided nation. But it doesn't have to be this way. The greatest power we hold right now is our ability to change how we interact with each other. But first, I'm gonna invite you into the eye of the storm. There's a swirling mass of chaos all around us right now. And the time we're gonna to spend together tonight is not about parsing out specifics of the national election or finding consensus by the end of the night on how a policy should be framed or who somebody should vote for in this election. Now tonight, tonight is about standing inside the calm center of this chaos and regaining uh, and gaining some tools for how to navigate the harder work ahead of stitching this country back together after we've laid bare our wounds in this election, discovered our fault lines, and unveiled the deep distrust that we're seeing all across the country in people who should be seen as our neighbors, our friends, our fellow members of our country. Nothing about our current state of national affairs feels good. We all talk about wanting it to change, but rarely do we really talk to each other about how to do that? And that's what's gonna make our time together tonight, I think, unique and very special. One of the tools that I like to use to get us in the right frame of mind for doing this kind of work is a tool that comes out of the HeartMath Institute, which uses scientific approaches towards getting us into greater coherence in our body, in the rhythms of our heart, so that we are able to connect to a deeper wisdom and to have greater clarity and to bring a more sense of stable calm inside a process like this was I'd learned a lot in school about what was freedom, justice, and equality. We didn't talk a whole lot about what is meant by our humanity. And that is the piece that is so central to what is missing in our collective community engagement. The greatest risk we face as a nation right now is our vast polarization. We don't trust each other anymore. We've lost touch with the essence of our humanity, our common struggles and our shared dreams. Recently, I went on a humanitarian mission to Zimbabwe and became intimately familiar with the ubiquitous African practice of Ubuntu the belief that I am because you are. Recently, uh, I'm sorry, Ubuntu is the spirit of human interconnectedness, a universal bond of sharing that connects all humanity. Ubuntu is knowing that we can be human only together. Knowing that we can be human only together. This is the core spirit that animates we are one. Before it became the name of my nonprofit organization, We Are One was the campaign slogan that I used in my 2022 campaign for Congress here in the 1st Congressional District. Running an uphill battle in a gerrymandered district with 60% of the people identifying as the opposite political party could be characterized as a political suicide mission. <laughs> However, the lessons I learned and the progress made by showing up with a spirit of unity in the midst of our polarized electorate should never be discounted. And I'm excited to share with you the insights and observations from this work in helping us get more closely aligned to the more perfect union we might still become. It all comes down to the concepts of being more respectful with each other. 
Democracy isn't just about the decisions that are made inside the Congress or inside the White House or inside the judicial system. Democracy is what happens inside of our conversations. Democracy is what happens when we engage in disagreement, dissent, and exchange of ideas. Democracy is ours, we must own it. We can't give our power or our engagement away. Just because we vote for people to be our representative voice in these uh, elected positions of office doesn't take away our role as citizens to still be engaged in this process. Not just in electing our elected officials, holding them accountable, making sure they know how it is we feel about the issues that are impacting us. We must be inspired to put ourselves into both the messy and beautiful task of staying connected to each other. Democracy is a practice of waking up every day and having the courage to talk to your neighbors with curiosity, compassion, and non-judgment, to keep the country and all we love about it connected to the goodness of who we are deep inside the wisdom of our hearts. S, sources. Check your sources of information. What's true anymore? We live in a fast-paced technological society where artificial intelligence, social media algorithms, declining journalistic standards, and politicians telling outright lies to hold on to power have combined to erode our sense of common understanding of basic truths. What is real and who to believe? We live in a world of illusion. Nothing is ever as it seems. Social media is a reflection of our collective consciousness. It especially can pay, play tricks on our sense of what is real. What lens or video angle is capturing the story? Who are we allowing to write the narrative? What assumptions do our conclusions draw? We have a duty as the observer to be curious, ask questions and seek truth. And with this duty comes the responsibility of conducting our inquiry with honor, honest self-reflection and integrity.